and welcome to the pilot. Calm down, audience. <laughs> Hello, and welcome to the pilot episode of Doctor Who, the community show. Not to be confused with the pilot, the series 10 opener. This one has far less Peter Capaldi in it, which makes it worse. Wait before you click away. Uh, you want Peter? You want Peter Capaldi? You want the beautiful Peter Capaldi boy? Here he is. Trans rights. Happy? Got your attention? Good. In all serious though, I have to give a big thank you to everybody who was extremely supportive of the idea when I first announced it. The general love and amazing responses to the Twitter account and the announcement video itself was more than I was expecting. <laughs> your excitement for this project only elevates my excitement to get this thing going, so let's hope this first episode isn't rubbish. The expectations are weighing down on me in unimaginable ways. Oh, before I forget. Oh, and a very happy Pride Month to all of you at home. <laughs> you know, some people, I don't want to call out people, but some people, i.e. my inner thoughts, are telling me that this show is all hype. It's going to be pants. It'll just be listing names and projects with no rhyme or reason just to promote. Well, inner thoughts, have I got news for you? It's that and, like, extra bits. <laughs> In fact, I'd go as far to say as this show is gonna be the great- Ladies and gents, this is the moment you've waited for. Been searching in the dark, your sweat smoking through the floor. Buried in your bones, there's an ache that you can't ignore. Taking your breath, stealing your mind, and all that was real is left behind. Don't fight it, it's coming for you, running at you It's only this moment, don't care what comes after Your fever dream, can't you see it getting closer? Just surrender, cause you feel that feeling taking over It's fire, it's freedom, it's flooding open It's a preacher in the pulpit and your blind devotion There's something breaking up the brick of every wall It's holding all that you know So tell me, do you wanna go? <laughs> Let's start with the Purple Doctor himself, known for sp and I should probably turn off that uh, washing machine, shouldn't I? <laughs> Noise would be a bit better, wouldn't it? Let's start with Dominic, the Purple Doctor himself, known for spreading love in the community, the colour purple, and obsession with the chase. As some of you already probably know, he's been releasing audio adventures, and another one's on the way! On June 12th, he'll be releasing his latest audio adventure, Into the Eyes of the Disciple. And I have been blessed! with an exclusive clip from the audio. Give it a listen. System overload. System overload. Ah, so this is how it ends, eh? Oh, I expected more of a twist. Awfully simplistic. Ah, control panel, good. Place is filling with carbon monoxide pretty quickly. Can't think straight. But I've got to input the code and the nuclear core will stabilize and then the world will be saved. At the loss of me, of course, but that doesn't matter. Right, now if I remember the code correctly, it's Alpha Delta Bravo something. Oh, I'll wing it. Hot stuff, I know. Thank you to Dominic for the clip, and everybody else be sure to go and check out the audio on June 12th when it releases. Oh, I should say every one and every project and trailer and whatnot I am going to mention in this video will all be linked in chronological order in the description. Speaking of already popular Hutu personalities, Doctor Who Velocity! About a week ago they released a trailer for episode 7 of their Doctor Who Velocity series titled The Silence. Featuring, of course, the Daleks. No, it's the silence, it's the well. People who have followed my channel for a while will probably know that I'm a bit critical when it comes to fan films and especially my own stuff, but with Doctor Who Velocity I always have to be impressed by how different it feels with their virtual backgrounds. So definitely go and check out the trailer for Episode 7, The Silence. Now we get to a tricky place because I want to promote upcoming projects but I'm from the past as you're watching this. I'm filming this on this date. There are things I want to talk about that are upcoming for me but not necessarily upcoming for you. But who cares, it's promotion and I want to talk about these anyway. Ah! First of all, the Hit or Miss podcast has a new episode coming out. 
and it's looking to be a big and ambitious one. This will feature an almost ridiculous amount of guests, some of them I'm sure you'll already know, ranging from Dominic, the Purple Doctor as mentioned, Thariz, Xander Grogan, and even yours truly for a segment. The guys who run it are absolutely lovely, I've worked with them in the past, so definitely go and check it out when it comes out. Or if it comes out. It may have already come out. Do you see the issue? Mondas Productions is releasing another one of his figure adventures, titled Restoration of the Cybermen. I adore his figure adventures, easily one of my favourites that are still making stuff. And funnily enough, it also features another good friend of mine, Luke Lane, who is voicing the Cybermen. And I can tell you, his impressions of both Cybermen and Daleks he's done in other things Incredible! Yeah, Nick Briggs better watch out for Luke Lane, he's after his job. The cannon shall be ready in five, four, three, two, one. Doctor, you recognize me? You are the greatest enemy of the Cybermen. As of recording this, that's all the upcoming projects that I have been made aware of, or that I just knew about. If you have a trailer or a teaser out about a project you're very excited to show, please respond in the comments to it. I would love to feature it in an upcoming episode, or tweet it at me, at WhoCommunity. Without further ado, let's move on to other stuff. Get in the church! Back to the desk! Expect a lot of moving around as I don't know quite how I want to format this yet. <laughs> Please let me know what you like, or if you think I'm just a bad host. Well, don't say that, I'll, I'll cry. Ah! Next, I want to show off some other Doctor Who projects that have already been released and you guys have actually sent to me. Yeah, these ones I've actually been able to watch in its entirety before filming this. So, you know, I guess the other ones I've already spoken about could also just feature bad, unspeakable things. Oh God, what if one of them says Heaven Sent is bad? Anyway, the Disused Yeti, which is, I mean, a perfect name, if we're being honest. He has released an illustrated Doctor Who short story titled Making History. This follows the first Doctor and no more spoilers. I will say though that the atmosphere and the illustrations that accompany the audio really do its job brilliantly at making it feel like an authentic Hartnell episode. Nothing will stop the war now. What war? asked Stephen, who had never been one for subtlety. Harlow looked at him as though he was mad. Are you insane? What do you mean, what war? Uh, what my young friend means is, uh, um, well, uh, we've, we've been away. It was a lame finish, and the old man was left rubbing his fingers together as he tried to summon a more convincing follow-up. TARDIS Glitch earlier this year released Restoration of the Master, an excellently voiced audio series following you guessed it, the Atraxi. That joke funny yet? No, it's the Master. The different incarnations of the Master. The terrific cast here are fantastic in each of their roles, ranging from the wonderful War Master to the brilliant Missy. The outstanding impressions mixed with the already great script makes for a terrific listen. Oh, I thought something like this would happen if we didn't dispose of the body stealer first. Because you'll know his face. Always funny how no one listens to the girl of the group. Oh, do be quiet. Listen, Master. You need to remember that this war requires you to be there. Many things will happen differently without you in the mix. Next, an obvious shout out to the Who Knows podcast. Who knows, eh? <laughs> I thought I locked your cell! <laughs> You'll never take me alive! <sighs> Crikey, he's a fast one. Oh, yeah. What was I? The Who Knows podcast is part podcast, part interview series. Although it's more popular than I currently am, so you probably knew that. Just in case you don't know, their guests range from Who To personalities to people directly connected with the show. And for their season two finale, they had to go and flex some muscles and get Sophie Aldred, ace herself. On a side note, by the way, I have actually met the wonderful Sophie Aldred, pictured here. And let me just say that she is a very lovely person and is very small. She's small. End of side story. Link to the full podcast above. Below. Just kidding. I subverted your expectations, didn't I? 
I'm a genius. So what was it like beating up a Dalit with a baseball bat? Oh, actually, it was more fun in rehearsals because, again, there was only one chance to do it. So we rehearsed it a few times and then... Um, and then we did it. We went for it. It was one take possible. Another short video I thought was really cool was from the user Mario Bowser. I think he likes Xbox. He has made a fan trailer for a potential season five box set. Speaking of, I've only got one of those classic era box sets. Should I get more? Can I get more? Oh, isn't it like a limited run? Have I already missed out? Oops. Oh well. <laughs> to be honest, the only one I want to see is the one where the companions are cooking something or are baking something. I've only seen little bits of that, but that looks just like... They should do a Great British Bake Off of Doctor Who. The Great British Who Off. You know, like they used to do with uh, the, that weird Weakest Link episode. Ah, oh, the best. I'll host that. Dude, if someone wants to do that, I'll host it. And finally, of the ones I was sent anyway, uh, Rassilon Productions, who, I'll be honest, when I first heard, I swear it was Sam Davis. Anyway, he has done a comic dub of The Nightwalkers. The cast, again, is excellent. I like how they used the comic panels. Wait a minute, Hogan. I'm not one of those who laughed. Take me to your farm. This scarecrow affair interests me. At last, a believer. Aye, come with me, Doctor, and I'll show you sights that will chill your spine. And before we get on to the next section, this! To select audio navigation, press enter now. <laughs> say that art is subjective, that a piece of art can neither be objectively good or bad. It is up to the audience to decide for themselves what they think. Except for all these pieces of art I'm about to showcase and all the artists involved, they are all objectively good. Don't at me! Don't at me! For example, Lee Binding makes me feel things. His Doctor Who art is genuinely incredible. It holds so much beauty and emotions and it captures those emotions from the show excellently. Two of his most recent ones I'd love to show off is this one from The Doctor's Wife. Oh wait, hold on. There you go. <laughs> this one from The Doctor's Wife, which shows Idris's final moments, and this one <laughs> from the ending of Journey's End, which shows Donna's fate. Both moments in the show that make me deeply upset. <laughs> nah, it's all right, I haven't cried in years. If you do not already follow his work, fix that. Another creator who got linked to me was Rome Twin. Rome Twin is an illustrator for a fan-made comic, which isn't necessarily Doctor Who-centric, but features many, many references, some that she was very kind as to send over some examples via dms if you want to go find some more please use the link below to go and read her comic and tweet at her every time you find a reference be like look i found one that won't get annoying fast another who i simply must mention uh, who also got featured recently on the doctor who official twitter page which on a side note thank you for finally making a pride post give it long enough we were all worried for a second there but sorry Bo is who I'm talking about. Made this piece of art of a few of the doctors just, just straight chilling in, in, a, in a field. It conveys such chilled vibes that it just automatically makes you feel chilled out for, uh, for looking at it. I do believe uh, phone wallpaper versions of these are either coming out or have already come out. Uh, go and find them for yourselves if you'd like one. I know I do. Speaking of Bo, she was kind enough to let me interview her. So, over to that.
So, hello, Bo. Hi. <laughs> this is going to be incredibly awkward, I can already tell. No, it's going to be fun. <laughs> Fantastic. That's, that's what I like to hear. First of all, straight out of the gate, I've got to say uh, congratulations for getting featured on the official Twitter account of Doc. Yes, thank you so much. <laughs> well, how did you feel when you saw that? I, I was at school and I... I, I couldn't believe it <laughs> because they approached me. Oh, and I, really? I was reading through our messages and suddenly it's like, oh, the official Doctor Who. And I was like, wait, <laughs> hold up. Is this real? So, uh, yeah, <laughs> it's really fun. That's awesome. That must have been a confusion. I bet you thought it was fake. Like, no, surely not. Yeah, I, I was reading it through it. I was like, what? <laughs> is, is this real? Are you sure? <laughs> but yeah, it, it's official and it was super nice. And uh, yeah. It's just really fun. What would you say is your first memory of Doctor Who? Like, what got you into into the show? I'm I'm a I'm a fairly new uh, <laughs> a new fan because I actually started watching Good Omens and was like, oh, oh this David Tennant dude, it's really <laughs> good. I wonder what what else he's he's done. I was like, oh wait, <laughs> Doctor Who. I I heard it somewhere before, so I started watching it and. Yeah, I just stumbled into the whole fandom and now I'm like a super fan. I'm like, oh yes, this is perfect. Yeah, Doctor Who is one of those shows where you watch one episode and you're like, oh, okay, I've got to watch the, hun yeah. the other like thousand episodes now. Yeah, it truly is. I was like, whoa, okay, there's, there is so much and I need to ha have it all. So yeah. <laughs> In addition to that, uh, what got you into drawing and doing this art? Um, I did uh, game art before this. I did like four years at school game art and development. And I already did that like concept art already. And now I'm at film school, so I want to continue in concept art. And I just started drawing Doctor Who figures. I'm like, oh, that's kind of fun. I might post it to Twitter. And yeah, that's how it all kind of blew up over there. <laughs> Which is really fun. Like, it's very unexpected. <laughs> it's such a brilliant style, though. I mean, as soon as I personally saw it, I mean, it, it was the little details that really stood out, like um, uh, Nine holding the rose and the little small bugs and bees and butterflies. It just it just oozes this chilled out mood. I was in a very chilled out mood myself, so that, that kind of <laughs> flowed into the drug, like, oh yes. It feels like it should be uh, the background to one of those like chill vibes to chill and relax yeah. to. And what gave you the idea to make this one in particular? I'm in a, a, an, a group called Spectral Horizons and they do audio stories. And uh, I'm an artist for, for them. And every Wednesday we, uh, yeah, we get together and yeah, just kind of vibe. And I always do like an art art stream, like I just doodle. And this ju this just happened. So I was like, oh, I'm gonna draw a very cute five and a very cute eight. And that just, yeah, it developed as a whole thing. So when the black and white version just blew up, I was like, okay, I'm going to make this into a full color one and phone back. <laughs> well, I've got a I've got another question for you. Are you open to commissions, or are you looking for a career in making art? Uh, definitely a career. I, I yeah, I would really want to continue in concept art and just go to uh, different studios and work there because yeah, that, that's kind of my thing. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, commissions I might think I might think of doing that, but I don't have a particular really like style that I have right now. It's like oh, yes, I'm gonna doodle something and it it just happens. So I don't have a particular thing I do. Yeah, if people are up to it, I, I, I definitely want to do that, so uh, yeah. Oh, I'd totally get one. I, I'd pay top dollar for one, there's no doubt about that. <laughs> and final question, is this is going to be the tricky one, you better watch out for this question. Favourite Doctor Who story, go! Oh, uh, <laughs> Enemy of the World is my absolute favourite. <laughs> Ooh, that is a good one, that's a good show. Yes, the second Doctor is my, is, is absolutely lovely. And when I saw, because at first I was kind of sceptic because of the recorder, like, I'm going to like this guy and then just the whole season just went so fast and I just I just loved it. Yeah, Troughton is one of those doctors where you don't expect to like him as much as as you're going to, but then as soon as you watch that first episode it's like, oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yes. I had that and the companions are great. It's just great stories. It's yeah. It's just wonderful. I like him so much. <laughs> well, thank you so much for your time. And I certainly look forward to seeing any and all art you do in the future. Yeah, I will definitely post on my Twitter. So <laughs> well, if for everyone who is listening or watching or what have you, definitely go and follow uh, at Bo the Original on Twitter. Check out anything and everything that comes out of it. Yes, thank you again, Bo. Yeah, no problem. It was fun. <laughs> I don't know why I felt like talking into a mirror for this bit. I think it just felt more artsy. And with the rain gently pitter pattering on the windowsill. 
Chill vibes, man. Before I leave this mirror dimension, if you are an artist or if you are a fan of an artist that I didn't mention, please link to them, uh, again, at Who Community or, or on the comments of this video. I'd love to see more. Did somebody say happy birthday? I did, just then. Were you, were you listening? Okay, maybe this is common knowledge, but I found out through Google that Colin Baker and Carol Ann Ford share a birthday. Why did no one tell me this? I met them quite recently at a lovely Phantom Films event. They were both next to each other. I forgot to turn off the washing machine again! So on June 8th, I hope you all join me in wishing Colin Baker and Caroline Ford a very, very happy birthday. And if either of them are watching this, hi, you all collab. Ooh, grandfather! Did you know we share a birthday? For the last time, I'm not your grandfather, I'm actor Colin Baker. Now help me pack for my next seven back-to-back -back conventions. <laughs> Now, little did I know in my YouTube bubble, but there is a whole Doctor Who ecosystem thriving on TikTok. And where I may not understand TikTok, I would still love to promote these very, very lovely people. I feel it only makes sense to start off with the two people that pretty much made me get TikTok, or at the very least convinced me. This being Luke Lane, or Hey It's Luke Lane on TikTok, and Joe, also known as Lizzie Joe 221 b on TikTok. These two people are now very good friends of mine. They are lovely people, and Jo especially does this character called Venus Flint. She does many TikToks as this character. Uh, I will not explain any further. If you want to find out more, please go and follow her. And follow Luke. He is a very lovely human being. Another to mention is Abby of Abby of Traken on TikTok. She does many, many different cosplays, ranging from Jenny, to Rory Williams, <laughs> that what the one of Rory Williams in his pants being a personal favourite. <laughs> so again, go and check her out. And if there's any other TikTok creators that you know of, or maybe you are one and you'd like to promote yourself, please let me know and I'd love to feature you next time on TikTok Corner. Should I have names for these sections? Should I have like, I don't know. <laughs> this is the pilot episode. We're figuring things out. We're learning together. Mwah, mwah. <laughs> also, I'm just going to put this here because I didn't know where else to put it. I'm not going to use this series to promote myself. Other than this show as a whole, I'm not going to promote anything I make or my social medias because it's more of a thing of the wider community. The whole idea behind this show is to show off the best and brightest from all different corners. And I mean, this show's already vain by me being the host, isn't it? You don't need me promoting myself. But anyway, next! <laughs> this is a weird angle. The final section I was going to do was a cosplay section. Obviously, cosplays are a vital and huge part of the Doctor Who community, myself partaking many, many times. <laughs> but honestly, I don't know who to promote. So if you are a cosplayer, if you are just getting into cosplay, if you already do it for years, please let me know. I would love to show off photos from photo shoots and particular people in the community that you think are vital and big and awesome people. Please let me know. I want to do more. The end of that. Wow. And with that awful cosplay section I did over there, that wraps up the pilot, at least everything I can theoretically do with this pilot. I hope you really, really enjoyed this, uh, or, or maybe you got a kick out of having your name mentioned. That is the kind of positivity I want to spread out. But I know gosh darn well that there is so much more I can do with this show. Whether it be how-tos of how to cosplay characters or make props, whether it be challenges, I really want to do a challenge, or like, you know, like a fan art challenge or cosplay challenge or whatever it be. be. And if you have any ideas of segments I could do, please let me know. I am open to any and all ideas. If maybe you run an event and you'd love me to come along and film segments for it, that is the dream. Phantom Events calling you out. <laughs> I have many, many things I want to do in this lifetime. I would love to do a live sketch show uh, based around Doctor Who. I would love to interview actual people from the show uh, in person. I want to go to conventions and talk to fans face to face and... Ah! There are so many, so many things I'd love to do. But I cannot do that without your help. Now, what usually follows that sentence is a Patreon link. I'm not doing Patreon. <laughs> not only because I've tried that before and it really didn't work, but... I don't look to make a profit here. I mean, I'd love to. Like, if there was a way to make money off it through, like, I don't know, merch or something, I would love to do that. But right now, 
I just want to make cool stuff and promote some happiness. <laughs> I think this goes without saying with sort of the mission statement of this show, but I don't aim to talk about things like the John Barrowman and Noel Clark situations, shall we call them? I don't want to talk about that. I want to specifically focus on the community, the people, and just cool stuff that's happening with the show in general. Also, that doesn't include, you know, the sort of leaks from the actual show itself. I just, I don't want to be spoiled. I, I, I want to be surprised by season 13. Come on now, stop giving me, like I've seen the pictures of, of the people on set. That's fine if you're into that, but like, it's not for me. But before I ramble on too long, Thank you again to everyone who was supportive of me making this project. Thank you to everyone who has watched all the way through. Thank you to those who have shared this video. I want to make more. I want to make a proper episode one and hopefully use this episode and your response to it as a way to make it make sense. <laughs> and hopefully use this pilot and your response to it to make it the best it can be. Thank you again. I hope to see you in the future for episode one. That's all for now. Bye-bye.